Welcome back to the wave pool in Bristol, England. In our last video, we shared our first surf since the second COVID lockdown in the UK came to an end. What do you do when you can't surf and have access to the internet? You start looking at new boards. We are conscious that we have be a backlog of content. So in today's video, we are going to share the month of April 2021 and how we got on downsizing to a six foot Tomo Shapes OB1 surfboard that is basically a Firewire Cymatic. Why the changing board? Was it a simple transition? And how did it help our journey? You're about to find out. My name is James Davis, and I've been skydiving for over 22 years, competing and jumping all around the world. I want to find out if the latest wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I'm going to see if an average UK-based surfer can train at the Wave Garden in Bristol for 12 months and learn to get barreled. These are the boards that a friend of myself purchased over the lockdown period. They are OB1 surfboards from Tomo Shapes, made under license by XTR in California. The basic dims are that they are six foot in length, have rounded off noses instead of pointy ones, a relatively flat entry rocker, Tomo's quad inside concave bottom design and are about 40 litres in volume. Having had the opportunity to surf a modern plating hole design a few months ago, see video link above, I love the speed, it made sense to look at the options on the market. It was a logical move to take a look at the Tomo shapes, have a think about what board fitted our ability, the direction that we were heading in and where we'd mainly be surfing. The XTR construction made a lot of sense as the blank doesn't take on water when it gets dinged and there is a pretty solid wall in the wave pool that everyone will have an interaction with at some point. The waves you are watching are from our first session on the board. Having tried to be sensible with the equipment choice over the last few months we were super happy with the first surfs. Everyone is naturally biased towards the board they ride but we were super happy with the choice, it was a really good move. As the trailer says, we are trying to get Bauer in 12 months and are interested in starting to learn the basic performance surfing fundamentals. It's been pretty interesting interacting with some of you in the comment section, as it seems people can have very passionate views. But the key point to recall is that it seems reasonable to say there is no perfect board for us all. And we all have different directions and desires when it comes to board designs, which is pretty cool when you get to think about it. After the first surf on the new board, using the advanced wave settings, we felt comfortable enough to try and focus on the Advanced Plus waves the rest of the month, which is one setting up compared to the Advanced waves that Bristol Wave Pool offers. Seems like a good idea to share all the bad waves as well as the good ones to give a realistic view of the month and how we were getting on. Missed time cutbacks, bad pop-ups, rushing to get around for a second wave, missed timing sections, bad foot placement, poor body positioning and even poorer positioning on the wave. You name it, we experienced it. But at the very same time, totally loved it. Embracing the grind was pretty cool, as who doesn't enjoy addressing some of their surfing problems and getting better? That journey is just timeless. Some of you have also asked how regularly we are surfing. Five to six sessions a week would be a good estimate, although recently this has fallen back a bit to every two weeks. As we mentioned in the intro, we have a backlog of content, and that's because an exciting new surfing project has stolen a lot of our time. More on this new project to come, but it's pretty exciting. Ideally, we would be uploading a video once a week, but as mentioned, time has been limited and it's been difficult to keep up to date. We don't want to bore you with loads of similar looking waves, but if you follow carefully you should be able to see some decent progression and increased confidence. Just being in the water and being able to serve as much as we have has been very special. 
One thing that is amazing about the wave pool is how social the experience is and how helpful the other surfers in the water are. It's been amazing to share the waves and listen to other people's experiences and thoughts around techniques, how to approach surfing and help us with the problems we've had. With regards to the board, it's an obvious thing to say, but we were clearly really enjoying it. Surfing seems to love a unique selling point and a big marketing pitch, but the speed of the modern planing hole seems to be the real deal. The board was pretty easy to adapt to, and in retrospect, we probably went with too much volume. Hindsight is 2020, but we didn't want to move too radically in volume, so it was probably a smart move. And as you can see, we're catching lots of waves and improving just fine. I'm 90 to 95 kilograms, and I've heard videos of experienced people talking about the low 30 litre range, so there's quite a range left to experience. It's always interesting hearing different opinions on board design. One area that seems really interesting is rail design. Views around where the apex of the rail is, how it is shaped, how soft or hard it is, and what different people have to say about getting a rail into the water, the impact of the thickness and board outline, i.e. how straight or curved the rail line is, are super interesting. Fascinating stuff and so many different interesting points of views. Anyway, back to our board. And the bottom line is we're really enjoying it. Surfing mainly the advanced plus waves in April was really beneficial. I've done another video on the differences between the advanced and advanced plus waves in Bristol. But for me, trying to do the cutback and get the timing right on the more powerful wave which requires better timing was a real challenge. These waves have been great because they were just outside of my comfort zone and provided the perfect challenge for where my level is at. In keeping with the last video, we also wanted to share some footage from surfers that really stood out. These three guys had just been competing at a local competition and were flying around the wave pool. It was pretty cool to see some strong backhand surfing, some airs, and just all round good surfing. It's always such a pleasure to see what is possible on the waves, get a bit of inspiration. In the next episode, join us as we get a special opportunity to visit the newest wave garden wave pool, Alaya Bay in Switzerland, where we get a chance to surf some waves, compare the different wave pools, and maybe surf our first barrel setting waves. Want to know what happens? You'll have to tune in to find out.